Rover versus EC again. Does this chapter like affect any of your viewpoints or anything? I know Rover didn't really do anything much this chapter besides get pacified, but regardless of what anybody wants to say, this is a drop in stock. In in indefinitely, this is a drop in stock for Rover. So, is Rover versus EC different? Like, I th I think the opposite. I think this. If all right, so. You can't like definitively say with 100% accuracy like who is more durable than the other, but I if we're just comparing feet for feet, and you know also the information that we got from Arada behind the scenes, I think Rover has the better feats here. Because it's Saitama Punch. Well, not because of that, and I also talk about it in the video. I compare the two punches, and it's difficult to pair them because you're you know serious punch and then like a punch. That was powerful, but without killing intent. But the fact that he took that punch, which, think about how powerful that was. How many characters could really take that punch, first of all? Not many. And then Rover, like, gets up, I don't know how many other minutes afterwards, and then runs away. And then goes on to get Crossfang Dragon Slayer Fist by a buffed Bang and Bomb. Then gets up again. Like, that's insane. And then we'd have to have a conversation about um, EC's lack of offensive capability. Well, that's what I talk about, too. Uh, Rover just destroys him in that department. Like, he's so limited, and Rover has some of the best offense in the series. And he's faster than him, too. He has managed to attack every opponent effectively, though. He he cut Genos in half, um, and he managed to smack Bing and, um, and Bomb. But it was when they were... Uh, busy doing the uh, the orifice, and they mentioned beforehand that they'd be uh, left open, and they needed genius to cover them while they did it, which he failed to do. Because EC, this is a point that I want to add on EC side. EC counterattacked mid orifice, so no, he's not like he's not like slow, like so slow that like he's you know like not moving, but he's not as fast as Overgrown Room. Well, he looks like he's slow when you, like, view his overall size. But when you really see, like, how much distance he covers... In he's the, fast like, as fuck. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for as big as he is, he moves very fast. He, he was dropping... When he first popped out from the ground... Like, yeah, no, no, he has speed feats, actually, yeah. The incineration cannon that uh, Gino sent after uh, Phoenix. Like, EC popped up out of the ground after he was shot, and then he caught it midair. So he, he can yeah. move. Yeah, he can move pretty no, he's, fast. he's like I'm saying he's not slow, which you think like a si a, a being of his size would be, but he's he's actually pretty fast for as big as he is. But um, I would say that Rover is still faster than him. Rover chased that nigga down through the entire cabin bit. Like Rover was running for his life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to roll with my bad. My internet went out, so I had to leave for a little bit. But um, I'm probably gonna have to go with Rover. I it's so difficult because I don't think just spamming those blasts that we seen Rover, uh, we seen Rover do is gonna be enough to break down Elder Centipede's defense. But at the same time. We already talked about it. I don't think Elder Centipede has enough offensive um, abilities to take down Rover. And Rover is looking like a damn tank, too. So that can't be disputed. Like before, you know, we just, like when I first saw Rover, I was, I was thinking like, okay, he's more offensive oriented. But no, this motherfucker is, he keeps getting up from shit that should be putting him down. He's an overall juggernaut. So, yeah. So, like, overall, all his stats are just high, high. So, I, I'm just going to have to give it to Rover off that alone. But there's, you know, the advantage of Elder Centipede is just his uh, size. His size and the fact that he can, like, go through the ground and whatever. It's just, like, Rover is kind of limited in how he can attack him a little bit. But Yeah, yeah that was ultimately I, what I came down to, like... EC has a size advantage, and he has regeneration, too. Because, like, when um, Genos blew out his insides, he, like, regenerated whatever damage he took from that. But, and then I was just like, okay, well, 
Rover can just infinitely spam those things. It was never really stated that he has like an endurance issue or like a, a cap to how many he can fire off in like a, and it's you know an amount of time. So he could just shoot him forever, I guess. And then I guess it'll eventually just beat Rover, uh, beat EC. I mean, I don't know because like Metal Knight's missiles didn't do anything. Genos's incineration cannon didn't really do anything. But Rover's blasts are way more powerful than those, just taking a guess. I mean, I try to compare them, but we can only really, like, see the area of effect. And um, it, it can vaporize demon-level monsters, so that's, you know, pretty impressive. But just think in the end, it, he's obviously going to be hitting EC with these because he's a huge target. And I said, even if he did burrow underground, he's just going to chase after him. Because he's going to be like, oh... I guess I lost him. Like, he's not going to be blast. Well, the other part that, like, so the blast themselves, like, all right, niggas going to call me a, a, a Geno's fanboy or whatever, but like you already know, I adhere to pictures a lot more than anything else. Geno's let off some cannons on him. I'm not saying that the um, the barrage beams or whatever that he was throwing, they looked like, like barrels. As he was running across EC's back. I'm not saying it was comparable to like Rover's volleys. But an incineration cannon or that thing that he did from his chest. Those can be are comparable to things that Rover did. EC was able to deal with a lot of that just with his shell. So I'm thinking like. is If Rover just like did what he did to Gorilla right. Where he's just throwing three or four like beams out at the same time. And they blow up you know. Do a little bit of area destruction. Is that really going to like affect EC? Are those strong enough to actually, like, you know, cause some damage? Even though they're going to, like, explode in this exterior. But, like, are they going to, you know, like, do, like, impact damage, trauma and shit? Or how do you guys view, like, EC's carapace? Like, how does that work to you? Is it anything that hits it? It's just if it's not strong enough to break it, it does no damage? Is that how you see it? Or can you do damage through the carapace? That's the thing. I just don't know. I don't know if it's, like, an endurance thing, if it's, like, time under tension. Or like if you hit it enough, it'll eventually break. Or, or you need like one massive thing to hit it. If you need enough power in one go, and if you don't have it, then it's just never gonna break. It's just you can't know for sure. You can just assume. Isn't that and like the, an anime trope where it's like, you know, that that indestructible kind of armor that dispels all force as it hits it so then the, the main character has to learn how to kind of hit through the object rather than at it oh you mean so like luffy <laughs> i was trying not to put this here boys <laughs> i mean you would i would like loki you would think that but i think the characteristic that it's um it's an animal and the fact that it's actually this is something that it's removing and from what i understand correct me if i'm wrong any like fucking uh uh, what the fuck is it? Bi not biologist, but y'all animal niggas out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm pretty sure like uh, uh, animals or creatures shed their exterior skin or in insects uh, case, like their carapace, their outer like shell or whatever, like because it's broken or repair or like um, to repair it or like to grow a bigger one or whatever. Like they usually get bigger when they get rid of that um, that first shell and shit and stronger, just like EC did actually. So well, they <clears throat> they do it the whole time that they grow because that is their skeleton. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, you would think that it'd be one of the um the the first example that Zoni, Zoni meant, where like you continue to do a certain amount of damage to it, and like that material can only hold out. It will have accumulative damage compared to like um if you take a sledgehammer and you hit like a, a brick wall in the same exact spot, it'll start cracking. But if you throw a fucking a football in the same spot. It probably won't start cracking ever. Like it probably like ever. Like the ball will probably break or pop before you start cracking the wall. That's what you, I think. You'd, the, you'd the be replacing that ball long before you'd be replacing that wall. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we could say that like Genos was kind of like throwing footballs at EC, but like they were just like basically popping the balls. While we're speculating whether Rover is a sledgehammer, because I think for sure his shell can crack. Like you can crack that shit. It's not like one punch and you'll get straight through. It's like, I can punch it. Oh, it cracked a little bit, but it didn't give way. That's what I feel like EC's shell does. And if it's like that, then... I don't know. Maybe I got to downplay Genos then. Because I really feel like Genos was fucking putting in work. 
That's what makes me. That's what I think gives credibility to what um, Sundown said. That maybe his shell is just that. Like, if you don't have enough force, and it just just dispels um, all the con- uh, all the um, other force on the other side that's coming from it. But like these niggas said, we can only speculate. But that's my theory. I think if you hit it enough in the same spot, you can crack that shit. 